Hey, what's going on? This is Marcos. Today, we'll be taking a look at how to track pictures, logos, videos, animations onto your video projects without having to learn how to keyframe or mask because as you know, if you know how to do those things, it is very time consuming. Personally, I don't like to do it. I'd rather do it automatically. And thankfully, there is an app for that if you're using Final Cut Pro X. It's called Auto Tracker Perspective by Pixel Film Studios, which is our sponsor today. Uh, so basically what this does is it, it replaces a uh, part of your video, whether it's moving or static like it is right now. Let's say I want to replace this photo of my daughter. I could do that. Boom, easily. Uh, so, but if you're aware of this angle right now, it's not just a matter of placing a photo on top of that. You also got to change the perspective because the wall is at an angle. So that takes special skill. Luckily, we don't have to learn it. We can just uh, uh use this plugin and make it happen now it adds a level of complexity when the, the the video is moving let's say i'm doing a slider shot i'm gonna show you a little bit how that works uh so if you want to check out this this plugin there'll be a link in the description and a code that you can get 30 percent off off the purchase so it, it's a really good deal uh without further ado let's jump over to the computer and i'll show you how that works all right, so I'm gonna play this video and as you can see, it looks like I'm working on editing this photo on Lightroom, but that's not actually what I'm looking at. If I disable the plugin from Pixel Film Studio, this is what I'm actually looking at. The screen is overblown a little bit. It doesn't look very good. That's because I was exposing also for the shadows. I didn't want this to be so dark. Otherwise it looked really moody. Uh, same thing with this right here. It looks like I'm looking at the posted Instagram photo I just edited, but if I disable the plugin, I'm actually looking at this. I accidentally put the focus here and not on the photo. That's my fault. But again, that's not the actual photo. How it would look like it looks like this. That's the actual uh, screenshot of oh, my phone. So I replaced it and I use that with using the plugin. Let's get to it. I'm going to duplicate this by holding on option, holding on option and dragging it on this side. Boom. And uh, this is actually the screen recording I captured with my computer using QuickTime. So if we drag the auto tracker perspective 2.1 over here to our timeline, let's bring it back in and let's put our playhead here at the beginning and open up the track editor. Let's make this bigger so you can look at it there. Let's expand. And also I'm going to zoom in here so we can see more of it. And these are the control points. So I'm going to start by dragging them over our screen here. And on the right hand side, you can see the zoomed in version of that point there i'm gonna do the same thing with all four points okay there we go i put the four points around my screen also make sure this timeline down here it's at the beginning of the clip not over here over here now we're gonna hit this play button and that's gonna take about 30 seconds to a minute in order to do the tracking and also the perspective keyframing that if it didn't do it for us, this would take us a lot of hours to do. All right, it's done and it looks like it did a great job. Uh, I'm gonna leave this at planar 50%. I don't change that. And I'm gonna hit export data and that's gonna take about a minute. All right, it's done. The window closed on itself once it's done. The next thing is to ch select this on and off on the drop zone and you want to select the source image. It can be a photo, a logo. In this case, I'm going to use a screen recording from QuickTime, which is right here. I was editing this photo from a recent video shoot I did. And so select this one and select the beginning of this. If I select it over here, if I select this clip over here, it's going to, it's going to start the tracking at, <clears throat> at this right here so we want to select the beginning of this clip there say apply clip now if you play this it should do a good job of tracking it oh i think i could do better i need to move some of the keyframes because i can see the bottom of the screen a little bit so i'm going to turn this off select track editor and uh make sure this playhead is at the beginning of the video and I'm gonna move this over up a little bit. I'm gonna move this up as well a little bit and then move this as well down. 
and that's it i'm gonna say play it and i'm gonna let it do its thing again hit export data and it's gonna take about a minute or so all right let's play it again let's select this on and off let's see how it came it comes out now Oh, just peeking in a little bit there on the left, but that's okay. I think it looks good. I mean, if I wanted to tweak this a little bit more, I could do that, but let's move on to the next one. I'm going to select the fo photo now. And this is a little bit more complicated because it's not tracking. Well, we're tracking a photo, which I'm going to show you. It's uh, this image right here. I took a screenshot on my phone of this. <clears throat> so we're gonna plaster it onto the phone. Uh, let's bring in the tracker perspective 2.1 here, trim it, and select track editor. At this point, always start over here to the left, and then select that part of the screen then this corner and then this corner over here and then this other corner you can see there on the right you can see the zoomed in version of that and we're gonna hit play and we're just gonna wait all right it looks like it did a good job export data and we're gonna wait about a minute or so All right, we're gonna select the on and off and then uh, select our source clip, which is this one right here. And uh, we're gonna say apply clip, but as you can see, <clears throat> it's not quite there because it, I guess the dimensions are different. I'm not sure why this is, but we have to fix that. So we wanna change the pan and the scale uh, I already went ahead and did that. It took me a couple minutes to figure it out, but these are the settings I used for this particular. I had to uh, pan a little bit on the X axis and on the Y axis, you can see there, and I scaled to 99%. And also change the, oh, well, 99% on the X axis and 32% on the Y axis. Now it's gonna take you a while to figure that out, but if we wanted to do that real quick, Let's say I do on the Y axis, I need to bring it like down. You kind of, you see that by itself kind of fixes it. Maybe you only, that's all, all you have to do is just fix the Y axis and you're done. Um, 31%, that looks good. If we play it or you know what, maybe it should be 32%. Let's see if we play it, let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's totally usable right there. I just changed the, well, not at the end. I would, you see this corner right here. I would try to fix that uh, possibly by on the X axis going 99. There we go. And again, going to the track editor and maybe switching this out, the X axis. I said I did like one. No, I wouldn't do that. Uh, so you're gonna have to play around with this until you get it right. No, I wouldn't do that. Um, <clears throat> until you get the corners right. Uh, so I would play with this again with the track editor and possibly, you know, when it's going off axis, the keyframes like maybe do some manual changes like right around here. You can say, oh, Let's bring it back this way. And I hit export data, see if that fixes anything. Yeah, kinda. I mean, I would spend more time here perfecting it so it looks like seamless, you know, so you can cover the, the, the screen in the in the bottom. Um, but otherwise it looks look I think it looks great. Look at that, you know, better than I could do on my own. I would probably expand this screen a little bit more to the right. That's what I need to fix. I went too much to the left. 
Uh, so yeah, you definitely need to spend a little bit more time on this to pr actually perfect it, but overall it does a really good job of tracking the screen and changing the perspective. All right, guys, this is it for today's video. Hopefully it was easy enough for you to understand. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please drop them down below. Also, there'll be a coupon down in the description. You use that code and you get 30% off if you're interested in this little plugin right here. Um, yeah, so again, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.